Welcome to Mill Hill East Church. A community where everyone can experience the love of Jesus. A family where we explore the love of Jesus together. A church which expresses the love of Jesus. You're welcome here. Hi and welcome to our online service. We start lots of these services by saying that we hope that you can experience explore and express the love of Jesus in a new way after our time together. And there are very few places in the Bible that sum that up more than this passage in Ephesians 3 verses 14 to 21. For this reason, Paul writes as he prays for this church community, I kneel before the Father from whom every family in heaven and on earth derives its name. I pray that out of his glorious riches, he may strengthen you with power through his spirit in your inner being, so that Christ may dwell in your hearts through faith. And I pray that you, being rooted and established in love, may have power together with all the Lord's people to the grasp how wide and long and high and deep is the love of Christ. And to know this love that surpasses knowledge, that you may be filled to the measure of all the fullness of God. Now to him who is able to do immeasurably more than all we ask or imagine, according to his power that is at work within us, to him be glory in the church and in Christ Jesus throughout all generations, forever and ever. Amen. Last Sunday in church, I was um, leading our time of worship together. And I was playing some songs and we, we used loads of musicians to put together a band the Sunday before. But this Sunday, it was just me playing at the front. So in order to, to make it sound full, I was using a backing track. And one of the ways that we use uh, backing tracks at church is we have, um, we have this, this track playing through the front, which has all like uh, piano and synths and bits of percussion and different things on it. But when you're playing in a band, you use headphones to hear something that the congregation can't hear. It, it's a metronome, it's a click of the beat. And it actually also has the cues for what's coming next in the song. So it'll say, chorus two, three, four, and it'll click you in. And it, it makes it really easy for the band to follow and play together. And it actually, when you get used to playing to it, is really helpful because you can kind of tune out and just worship God. And then it helps you know where you are in the song. It, it roots you in what's going on. Well, as we started the time of worship, um, I put the wrong headphone in and the way that the, the mix had, the, the way that the sound had been mixed is the, this click and these cues were more on one side than the other. So I couldn't actually hear the cues. I could hear the music and I could hear what I was playing, but the, the thing to keep me grounded, to keep me rooted, was just too quiet and I just went a little bit all over the place and didn't quite know where I was until the song died down and before the next song started I kind of subtly moved headphones over. That, that beat, that pulse, that rhythm, it rooted me in the song, it gave me structure and form and that's what roots do. And this passage in Ephesians, it talks about being rooted and established in love. And that's what we want as a church. So we've been doing this sermon series where in September we looked at what it means to experience the love of Jesus. And this month we're looking at what it means to explore the love of Jesus, to dig deeper roots. And our first sermon in this series, we looked at, at how we root ourselves in the Bible, in the story of God, in the scriptures. And last week we looked at what it means to root ourselves in our identity as children of God. And Femi shared with us what it means to explore our identities more and, and go deeper in that and how it shapes our lives in beautiful ways. 
But in this passage here, I think we could miss the point and then have the point brought more beautifully to us. See, this, this passage, those verses, you might have heard the end bit a few times. Um, he who is able to do immeasurably more than we ask or imagine. The sort of church I grew up in, it, it, that verse was often quoted in prayer meetings. So when we pray for something that we want, God can give us even more than we want. But there's a bit missing from that. Paul says, I pray that you may have power along with all God's people. And one of the things I want to focus on today is that one of the ways that we root ourselves more in love, we go even deeper, we give ourselves that pulse, that rhythm, is by taking part in the, in the longer song, in the wider song. We join in with all the other instruments. And for us, that means looking back and looking forward. That means taking part in the fullness of the church in all of God's people. Paul, um, when he writes this letter, um, actually one of the things that's remarkable is he doesn't put in that many um, place names or names of people or, or personal details or even specific advice for this church. And scholars have looked at that and said, well, maybe this is because this isn't a specific letter written to a people, but it's written for the people of God. And there's this beautiful sense when Paul writes in Ephesians that he's wanting to emphasise, yeah, Jesus died for me and for you to set us free. But he also died to make us, to win for himself a new people, to root us in something deeper, something richer. So as we think about this, as we think about being rooted in love and, and what that means, well, I want to explore three roots for us as God's people. Three roots, three things that we are rooted in. The first thing is that we are rooted in the story of Israel. Paul, in Romans 11, he, he speaks about it as we are like wild branches grafted onto the tree of God's people. And there's that sense that our story is consistent with the story of God. When we've looked at the life of Paul over the last couple of Sundays, we've, we've focused on the fact that Paul, he wasn't converted from one faith to another. Jesus realised all the hopes of, of Israel. He was the fulfilment of the story that Paul was carrying and searching for. There was this sense that for Paul, Jesus came and he was the picture of which everything else he'd been chasing was a shadow. That's how Paul talks about it. And I think in order for us to, to really root ourselves in faith, we have to take part in that consistent story of what God has done. See, for Christians, we don't have... Um, we don't have kind of Old and New Testaments in the Bible that are separate. We have a consistent story of God that flows through. God is ever gracious, ever loving, ever merciful, and ever working throughout history to bring, to bring about his perfect plans and his promises. And Christians often get this really messed up. And they don't quite know how to relate to the fact that that our Bible is a book of Jewish texts, of Jewish people writing to Jewish people. And Christians tend to go one of two ways. They either go in a way where they think, well, this is just kind of something that we, that we pass over, something that has been fulfilled. God has somehow changed what he's done in Jesus. That before they were trying to earn salvation and now we have the riches of grace in Jesus and we, and we move on. And that just doesn't make sense of what Jesus does. Jesus says, I didn't come to abolish the law, but to fulfill it. The Bible talks about Jesus being all the different threads that God has been doing through creation brought together into one place. But there are some Christians that go the other way and act like, well, in order to fully live out this stuff, we have to take on the story of Jesus and we should take on more of the practices and customs of Israel. But again, that's not what the Bible says and that's not what Jesus leads us to. He treasures his people. 
But part of what he does is, is he wins himself a new people. And he's doing a new thing, a, a rich thing. And both of those people, all that he gathers together, will they find their meaning and their purpose in Jesus. Jesus is the vine on which all the branches are grafted. He is the one in which everything else finds its meaning. All of our prayer, all of our worship, all of our scriptures, all of our patterns and ways of life, they all find their meaning in Jesus and in him alone. We are rooted in Israel's story and the fullness of Israel's story finds its place within Jesus. The second root is in Africa. We often think of Christianity as a, as a Western European religion that got taken around the world, but, but it's not at all. For the first four or five centuries, Christianity was, was dominated by Africa, and this is sometimes obscured in history. When I went to Bible college, we talked about the patristics or the, the desert fathers, the, the, the kind of wise, profound theologians of the past, but that obscures a little bit. That Christianity was based in two places. The, the centre of Christian thought was often found in Alexandria and Carthage, both in Africa. Alexandria in Egypt, Carthage in, in modern day Tunisia. And these fathers of the church, of theology, they shaped so much of what we think of as Christianity. Even the, some, some of the other significant places where the church was rich and vibrant, like Constantinople and Rome, they took their lead from what these Africans shaped. And our theology, our ethics, our Christianity has been shaped by Africa. Let me talk you through some of these significant people. There was um, Augustine of Hippo. He shaped so much of Christian thought, so much of what we have today. He came up with the doctrine of original sin. He spoke against slavery and said how it was inconsistent with the Bible. He came up with a concept of free will, of just war. He explained how the church and the political state should interact with each other and, and painted beautiful pictures of what God's kingdom looked like within that. He's one of the most significant thinkers in church history and he was an African man. We have Athanasius of Alexandria. He came up with monasticism. He was the first monastic, the father of, of all um, monks. The father of all people who choose to dedicate their life to, to prayer, to, to extreme rhythms of, of following God. He was the first who came up with lots of that, of dedicating all of our work and life and relationships to God. It was, it was him, it came from Africa. We have Cyprian from Carthage, who, who led the church through persecution and led the church to, to step away from idolatry and said, we do not worship the same way as those around us. We stick to Jesus and him alone. And if he gave his life for us, we will lay down our lives for him. At a really key point in Christian history where, where Jesus could have just been added to the long hall of fame of Roman gods, he led a different way. We have Oregon one of the most profound teachers in church history. He gave us the concepts of, of exegesis of how to take meaning out of the text, of textual criticism, how to take all the different fragments of letters and different pieces we have and put them together into the Bible in a way that is most authentically true to what the original writers put together. He came up with a whole study of, of homiletics of how we, we turn the word of God into sermons and preaching that would inspire and encourage the church. So I don't know if you were keeping count there, but just from a handful of names from the African fathers, we have the concepts of ethics, theology, how to study the Bible, how to pray, spirituality, all coming from Africa. Even core doctrines for Christians like the Trinity, were shaped and birthed in Africa from these profound African theologians. 
the roots of Christianity are in Africa. And the third root that we have, at Middle East, we are a United Reformed and Baptist partnership. And both of those strands of church, they trace their roots back to some real radicals. In fact, the word radical comes from the Latin to mean root, to get to the root of. And these radicals, they wanted to strip back the layers of church tradition. They wanted to strip back the layers of power that had been built up in the church and say, no, 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 we want to go back to the Bible as our source. And we want to stick to this belief that God can speak to and through anyone. There is no need for a priesthood. There is no need for, for prayer books. There is no need for the Bible to be translated into some language that we can't speak. God wants to speak in our hearts and through his people. And we can all gather together as God's people and hear God at work. We can discuss the Bible. We can pray together and lead each other in prayer. We can all take part in this. One of the big radicals in this movement was Thomas Hewis. He was a, a, an incredibly profound man. His beliefs about the Bible and about uh, the fact that religion shouldn't be dominated and monopolised by, by kings and politicians led him and a group of friends to flee to Holland for their lives. And there they set up church and they, they preached the Bible to one another. They prayed together as a community. They explored what they thought God was saying. And they came to a conclusion. If Jesus gave his life for us, we will give our life for him. So he moved back and he planted the first Baptist church in England in Spitalfields in East London. That wasn't enough for him though. He then wrote, wrote this beautiful work about the separation of church and state and attached to the front of it a letter and got it sent to the king and said, King, you are not able to rule between man and God. You are not able to have input into faith and religion. God wants to meet with people directly. In fact, he went beyond this. He said, actually, King, you shouldn't rule over people's faith, whether they be Christian or Turk, by which he meant Muslims, or Jews. Actually, Thomas Hewes' faith was so radical that he stood up for religious tolerance and freedom. He believed in the separation of church and state, that we should return to the Bible and allow God to speak through all people. I think that's a radical idea, especially when so much of politics has tried to bring church and state back together and, and mix political and religious power. Our radical roots teach us to, to keep away from that, to live out our vocation of God's people, to be a people of prayer and justice and conviction and to respect the image of God in each other as we lead one another in worship. Our roots are in these radical ideas about faith, about returning to the Bible as the source, stripping away the layers of power and privilege and tradition that churches would try to add to what Jesus did. I wonder out of those three roots, which do you feel most connected with? The story of Israel, the shaping of Christianity in Africa, or this radical movement to reconnect with biblical faith? Which of those do you most feel connected to? This week, I leave you with a challenge to explore one of those areas. We're going to share some, some links and some videos in different ways that you can explore one of those identities. But I just encourage you to, to take the time to, to connect yourself to that deeper root, to the fullness of the people of God. And I pray that as you do that, as you connect with worldwide, global, radical Christianity, as you expand your understanding of Jesus, beyond our cultural concept, our constructs and, and where we live and whatever you uh, uh, live and breathe within. I pray that through it, you may have a richer rooting in the love of God. I pray that you 
through the power of the Holy Spirit today, would be able to grasp a little more the edges and the depths and the heights of God's love for you and for his world. Amen. We have some worship videos up on our YouTube channel. You can join us in person for worship on Sundays at 11 a.m. And if you want to get connected with some of our programs and some of our small groups, then please do email community at mhechurch.com or you can drop us a message or a comment on Facebook and YouTube and we'll get back to you that way. Have a great week and may God's love shape all that you do. Living God, enable us this day. Pilgrims and companions. Committed to the way of Christ. Faithful to the call of Christ. Discerning the mind of Christ. Offering the welcome of Christ. Growing, Growing in, in the, the likeness, likeness of, of Christ. Christ. Engaging in the mission of Christ. In the world that belongs to Christ. Amen.